What's up, YouTube? And I'm back at you in another video. And in today's video, I'm going to give my prediction for the Alabama Crimson Tide versus the South Florida Bulls. Uh, this is going to be an interesting matchup. Um, I'm going to just go ahead and read off the stats for the game. Now, uh, both teams are one and one. Uh, South Florida's coming off a victory against FAMU. Uh, they took a loss to Western Kentucky uh, in their first game. Alabama uh, is coming off a loss to Texas, and they was able to win their first matchup against uh, Middle Tennessee State. So uh, both teams are one and one. And um, what's interesting about this game is that Alabama's going on the road to South Florida uh, to a non-power five school. So it's very interesting uh, how this is going to you know, play out. Uh, Nick Saban, since he's been there, he's never had a game like this where he went to the nine power five school on the road. So that's going to be interesting. Like I said, they're going to be playing, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they're going to be playing in Tampa, Florida. So it'll be interesting uh, to see how this plays out. Uh, capacity of 65,844 people. So uh, it's going to be interesting. Uh, it definitely gives uh, people in South Florida that didn't have, you know, opportunity to come to Tuscaloosa, you know, on plenty of, uh, well, gives them an opportunity to come, you know, see a good game in their state. So uh, this could be beneficial uh, for both teams, you know, recruiting-wise for Alabama and just uh, the experience of Alabama coming to uh, South Florida Stadium. So uh, it's going to be interesting. And I'm going to just start off with the stats. I'm going to start with Alabama. Uh, Alabama started um, Jalen Miro in their last two games. And um, I'm going to just read off his stats so far. He's had 45 attempts with 27 completions for 449 yards. He has a completion percentage of 60. And um, he has five touchdowns and two interceptions. Um, didn't have to out in the last matchup against Texas that a lot of us Alabama fans wanted. Um, Definitely needs to work on his uh, reading the defense and making checks at the line of scrimmage. I didn't see him make any checks at the line of scrimmage. And um, he definitely has some work to do. The whole team as, as a whole, Alabama has work to do. But uh, Jalen Miro would probably like to go back and look at fam and look at some things that, you know, he wasn't able to do, like missed a lot of easy uh, passes. And um, we left a lot of points on the board, you know, uh, he definitely has to clean that up if he's going to be the guy going forward. But, you know, it's going to be interesting in this matchup considering that uh, I reported asked Nick Saban did he consider making a quarterback change. He said he thought about it, but uh, Jalen Miro had some success later on in the game, and he thought, you know, he wanted to leave him in. But it's going to be interesting to see who starts in this matchup. You know, uh, me and my opinion, I don't know who's going to be the quarterback. If I had to make a guess, I'm thinking it's going to be Jalen Miro, but I think he might get a couple of snaps. Um, if he can't get the offense moving, I think Nick Saban's going to be forced to put another quarterback in there. Uh, the thing about that is, who is it going to be? You know, before the season started, uh, Tyler Buckner was actually, you know, been said that he was going to be the backup quarterback. And that's interesting. You know, a lot of people would think it would be Ty Simpson. Uh, Ty Simpson doesn't have as much experience as the other two guys, so I can understand that. But a lot of people are calling for Ty Simpson to come in. And I'll see what he can do. In my opinion, he has a, he's better at passing the ball from intermediate, you know, passes and stuff like that. And that's definitely something that we needed in this last matchup. Um, Jalen Miro has a great deep ball, but um, just reading the defense and uh, making the easy throws, uh, that's what he struggles in. He's going to have to fix that. But we could see Tyler Buckner in this matchup. We could also get to see Ty Simpson. But uh, that's going to be interesting to see what Nick Saban does in this matchup. Uh, wide receiver, uh, Nick Saban has uh, Jermaine Burton at wide receiver. Um, did pretty good last matchup. You know, he was the leading receiver. He had 120 uh, receiving yards. He had two touchdowns. Seems like he's settling down. Um, Toward the end of last season, Jermaine Burton started looking better. And uh, it looked like that's carrying over to this year. Uh, my opinion, wide receivers looked really, really good in the uh, matchup against uh, Texas. They was getting open. It just, you know, 
Uh, Jay Lamiro just didn't see him. You know, Isaiah Bunn, he had 110 receiving yards, a touchdown. Uh, Mari Knobleck, he had two touchdowns, a uh, tight end. Uh, mismatch for any uh, team up this season. He's going to be a really, really good player for us. Uh, then you still got guys like Kobe Prentice. He had 88 receiving yards. Malik Benson, uh, he didn't really show up too much. Um, he only had 38 yards, but Alabama was able to put up some points in this matchup. Uh, running back, uh, Jay Lamiro was the leading rusher. He had 92 rushing yards and two touchdowns. Uh, Jason McClellan, he had 84 yards and a touchdown. Uh, Rodell Williams, he had 48 yards. Alabama looked good, really, in the first uh, quarter when we was running the ball. We was pushing uh, Texas' stout defensive line off the ball, and uh, we did really, really good. But uh, it came to bite us when, you know, Texas uh, figured out that, you know, that Jalen Miro is going to struggle with throwing the ball. So uh, they went all in. They brought a lot of pressure, and uh, they kind of – you know, run game kind of stalled, you know, because – and it was pretty much giving us the pass. Like I said, we just can't complete it. So, uh, we definitely have to clean that up. But the run backs looked good when we was able to run the ball early on. And um, I can't blame, you know, uh, Reese about that, you know. Uh, I think he called a really, really good game. We just wasn't hitting the guys uh, in the passing game. So, uh, Tommy Reese did a phenomenal job with the running backs. Um, one thing I would like to see, though, I would like to see just one running back get, you know, the majority of the carries. Now, it's hard for a running back to uh, get in the groove when they're uh, keep switching them in and out. So uh, definitely something that we have to look for going, you know, forward. But uh, I like it when the running backs have a hot hand. Uh, a guy that I definitely would like to see, you know, going forward as well, get some playing time. Justice so Haynes, I know he had an injury, but uh, definitely a guy I'd like to see more of and Jam Miller. But uh, like, let one, one running back get the hot hand and see what we can do with that. And um, tight ends, tight ends was open and everything, but we didn't really throw the ball to him. So. Uh, defensively, Alabama looked fine in my opinion. Uh, we did give up some points uh, later in the fourth quarter. Uh, we held a Texas team, a really, really good Texas team led by Steve Sarkeesian to 13 points all the way up until the fourth quarter. I think we held them scoreless in the whole third quarter. So um, what can you ask for for a defense, you know, to shut down that type of offense in the third quarter? But we just gave up big plays in the fourth and didn't finish. So uh, Alabama has to do a better job defensively, uh, especially on the D-line. I, I don't know. Uh, we didn't sack. You know, Quinn Ewers, uh, the whole game, he just had a clean pocket back there, clean jersey. Uh, I thought Alabama's defense would have been better at, you know, putting more pressure on the quarterback, but uh, we definitely have to fix that as well. And I'm going to move on to uh, South Florida. That quarterback, they have Byron Brown. Uh, he got the start for them. Uh, he has 68 attempts for 35 yards. He has 363 Passing yards, has a complete percentage of 51.5. Uh, he has four touchdowns. He has two interceptions. Um, he's their guy, you know, at this point. Um, he's also their leading rusher on the team right now with 42 carries for 183 yards. So he's a runner, guys. So he can pass the ball and he can run it. So this is going to be a good test for Alabama's defense. Um he has four touchdowns rushing as well. So uh, they're putting up points. He has four touchdowns and four uh, passing touchdowns. So um, really, really good stats for a quarterback. Um, Alabama's going to have their uh, hands full, you know, in my opinion, offensively. Uh, talent should take over, but uh, this is going to be a good test. Now, Probably the number one running back is Naquan Wright. He has 148 yards uh, rushing. Uh, he doesn't have a touchdown. Like I said, the majority of touchdowns come from the quarterback. So Alabama's going to be tasked with stopping Byron uh, Brown. You know, uh, this is a guy that can do it all. He can pass it and run it. So everything's going to go through him. 
but they do have some talented running backs behind him. Mike, Michael Dukes at running back. He has 104 uh, yards rushing. So they have the guys. It just he's the one that's been getting all of the, the rushing touchdowns. So, but um, Alabama's going to have to defend all parts of the field, you know, with this team. Uh, Caffrey Brown, uh, their leading receiver, he has 109 yards receiving. He has two touchdowns. Definitely a guy we're going to have to look out for. Sean Atkins, he has 100 yards receiving. Uh, Name Simmons, he has 65 yards receiving and got a touchdown. And Jason Littlejohn, tight end, he has a touchdown. So a talented team, you know. A team has accounted for four uh, touchdowns, you know, in the last matchup. And um, definitely a team that's going to give Alabama, I think, some problems. And especially it's going to be a road environment. A uh, reason I say that, you know, uh, Alabama lost at home and we had about, I think, 10 penalties. Uh, same thing that happened with Texas last year when we went on the road to Texas. You know, Alabama has to clean those penalties up. There's it's no way – that Alabama should be getting penalties at home like that. And um, that kind of worries me going into this matchup, going on the road. Even though it's a non-Power 5 school, still, uh, it's going to be probably a loud environment on the road, snap count. Uh, Seth McLaughlin wasn't snapping the ball right last game. So all those things can pile up and be a problem. And I don't care who you're playing, uh, especially if South Florida comes in there to play. And I'm pretty sure they're going to bring, they're going to throw the kitchen sink at Alabama. So, they have to clean up on the penalties and play sound on the road. It's going to be interesting. I'm definitely going to be watching this game to see what happens. Alabama must have a clean game, and they they better bring it. That's all I'm going to say. Um, because uh, any team at this point is going to they see our weaknesses right now, and they're going to attack them. Uh, South Florida's leading tackler, DJ Gordon the fourth. Uh, he has 12 total tackles. Uh, he has one pass defended. Uh, definitely, you know, leading tackler for them. Daquan Evans, uh, DB, he's the second leading tackler with 10. Um, they definitely got some guys that got some sacks. Amaris uh, Brown, DB, he has a sack. Uh, Jonathan Ross, defensive end, has a sack. Um, Jason Vaughn, DB, has a sack. Um, got a couple guys got interceptions as well. Jalen Stokes at DB. Uh, Logan Berryhill, he has two, so. Uh, so far, they have three interceptions on the season. Uh, they have seven pass defended. And they also have, yeah, they have four sacks on the season. So uh, definitely a defense that can be disruptive as well. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what happens in this matchup. What what Alabama is going to, who's going to start at quarterback? Um, are there going to be some change up at, you know, key positions? It's going to be very, very interesting. But uh, if I had to give my prediction, I'm picking Alabama to win this matchup. Uh, I'm not going to give a score prediction. I just think Alabama's going to have to come out, you know, be uh, clean up the errors, the, the penalties. Uh, but South Florida, I feel like it's going to be a challenge, you know, especially for our uh, DBs, you know. Definitely got to clean up some things on all parts of the defense and the offensive line. You know, uh, we gave up too many. Uh, I think Texas te- uh, sacked us about four times. They got to clean up the sacks. They, Alabama has to clean up on the pass, uh, the passing game. The O line has to pick up, you know, blitzes, and the pass protection has got to be right. The run blocking can be better, uh, be more consistent. We just got to get the, uh, our offense rolling. You know, uh, whoever's going to be the quarterback, they got to be able to hit, you know, the short to immediate routes and deep ball. You know, can't have teams teeing off on Alabama. Uh, knowing that we just have a run game and then, you know, make it where we have to pass the ball. You have to make other teams um, honest, basically. You know, can't be one-dimensional. But uh, that's all I have for the video. I got Alabama winning. Uh, how big they're going to win, I, it, it's depending on them. You know, they're doing a lot of talking, talking about their piss and all that. We, we can't we can't go by what you say. We got to go by what you do. And um, South Florida would love – to beat Alabama, had that on their record that they beat Alabama. So, but uh, I got Alabama winning. Uh, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And I'll definitely be back with more college football content. Thanks, guys, and roll tide.